Welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live. We've been talking a lot about 5G, and a lot of the focus has been on phones, 5G-enabled phones. But Qualcomm is releasing a new chip for connecting devices to 5G networks that it hopes uh, will be adopted outside of just what we're talking about in phones and potentially also challenge uh, Wi-Fi networks out there as well. It's an interesting new opportunity, so I want to break that down here. Joining us to discuss is Qualcomm SVP and head of 5G, Durga Malati, alongside Yahoo Finance's Dan Howley. Uh, and Dirk, appreciate you coming on here to chat this. I mean, uh, so much about 5G is focused on me. phones. Uh, but what do you make of maybe the opportunity outside of just that? Look, the way we actually look at this is that we are really increasing the pace of innovation in 5G. Uh, we are already in year three of 5G, and this is our uh, fourth generation of, uh, of 5G modems. So there's a lot to unpack in the announcement that we made. On one hand, there's a lot of consumer-centric applications that are going to be driven by this modem. Uh, this is the very first uh, 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 5G modem that actually breaks the 10 gigabit barrier. It's capable of 10 gigabits per second in your smartphone. The more you think about it, it's quite staggering just to look at it that way. But it also enables a large number of new vertical industries. And uh, this is uh, the real uh, uh, goal of 5G. This is what we've been driving towards. So the second generation, also known as release 16 of 5G, is the one that actually drives uh, 5G adoption into all kinds of uh, new industries, whether it's industrial automation, uh, enterprise applications, uh, fixed wireless services, and whatnot. Jerry, this is Dan. Uh, I want to talk about kind of the, the applications that you discuss. You know, uh, 10 gigabits per second, obviously uh, a huge jump in speed uh, compared to standard 4G LTE. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, there's gigabit 4G LTE, but you know, out in the wild, I guess, uh, you know, being the street uh, or wherever, uh, where do you expect these speeds to really land? Because obviously, 10 gigabits per second is you know in a lab in perfect conditions. Uh, and then, as far as uh, expanding into the space with industrial uh, manufacturing, things along those lines, how do you expect this to improve uh, those kinds of opportunities? Yeah, these are good questions, by the way. I'm going to actually split that into two parts. So one thing to actually always remember is that we've stated that in the past, that when we talk of these very high uh, peak data rates of 10 gigabits per second, the way to think about this is that for an average consumer on a smartphone, it really starts raising the bar on the guaranteed data rates, the minimum data rates along with the average user experience. So it's not so much just about the peak data rates, but that very high peak data rate allows you to get to average data rates. Imagine you're just walking around and you can just take one gigabit per second for granted. I mean, that's quite something. So that actually already improves the overall user experience for existing applications on smartphones while enabling new ones. But the other way of looking at this is, let's take a look at where exactly do we start seeing these really high data rates come in. Fixed wireless applications is a good example of that. Uh, this is a place where you're talking of um, uh, working from either, either in remote areas or working from home or in enterprise where you are basically making sure that you have some kind of an equivalent wireline experience, but using wireless. So uh, consumer premises equipment, which is some, something that is put outdoor, uh, it allows you to get to those very high gigabit data rates uh, at home. Now, starting from last summer onwards, you might have seen some of the announcements that we made where we were extending the range of what you could do uh, by getting gigabit per second at five kilometers, six kilometers, seven kilometers globally. We started actually in rural Wisconsin and went all the way to Australia and Italy and where we showed you can get these extremely high data rates no matter where you are. So fixed wireless is a good application which is already coming up. Then when you go into factory automation, industrial uh, IoT as it is called, uh, that's a place where these very high data rates and the high capacity of 5G is going to be uh, critical, along with a lot of new attributes on latency reduction and reliability. Uh, so in that sense, we are truly hitting our stride with uh, 5G applications enabled by the range of these uh, the products that we just announced, starting with uh, uh, the X65 modem that's capable of 10 gigabits. I guess, when do you think these will come to user smartphones and, and be more readily available in general? So our product lines that we announced, uh, they are sampling right now. We are already working with smartphone OEMs. And uh, we expect uh, commercialization towards the tail end of this year. It really depends upon the OEMs, but that's the direction in which we are heading towards. This is in smartphones. Durga, let's talk about your uh, footprints 
in China, where we have really seen this 5G race heat up. You, of course, have been working alongside uh, some of the biggest smartphone makers there in terms of uh, using the Qualcomm 5G chips, including Xiaomi and Oppo. But you've essentially been banned from providing components to the largest smartphone maker there, Huawei, since 2019. Um, when you look at your market share now, down to roughly 25 percent, how much runway do you see in that market, given that you can't do business with the largest player there? One of the interesting things that we have observed with 5G is that uh, it's always, uh, you know, every time there's a new generation, a lot of new OEMs actually start uh, stepping up to the plate. And we have seen exactly the same thing this time around. You've seen uh, multiple other Chinese OEMs uh, stepping up to the plate, uh, moving not just in domestic China, but also moving outside China into Europe. And we've, had, we've seen a couple of launches in the US as well. So in that sense, uh, as Qualcomm, we continue to work uh, with uh, the Chinese uh, smartphone makers, uh, along with a lot of the ecosystem over there, uh, as we expand globally, working with all of our traditional partners as well. Yes, yeah, certainly competition heating up there. A lot of Taiwanese makers also looking to move in the space aggressively. Uh, Durga Malati, Qualcomm SVP and head of 5G. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today. And our thanks to Dan Halley as well for joining in on the interview.